How the heck are everybody? I'm Fastidious. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to our official Pyros Fusion Guide. That is right. Today marks Pyros Shard Summoning Event Eve. And boy, I am so excited. And I know a lot of you guys are really excited too. From the second it was announced that Pyros would be the next fusion hero, I've been getting requests to do this guide. We did want to take our time with it to make it as high quality a product as possible. Uh, and as you can see from this personal fusion calendar and shard tracker behind us that Maku, Dolores, and I created, uh, we really think we're going to give you all the resources you need to be successful. However, I do need to mention this fusion, this summoning event is shaping up to be the hardest one yet in Watcher of Realms. So on top of the resources like what you see behind me, I want to make sure I give you all the tips, tricks, and strategies to make sure that you, even if you're a free to play or low spender, can turn this hardest fusion event yet into something totally easy. All right, let's hop in. Fastidious. Fastidious. All right, folks, let's get into it. First off, I want to give a big shout out to Moonton. They released their version of the Shard Summon calendar to give us all the information we needed to create our calendar. They did that on Monday, the day the fusion was announced, the day it was announced that Pyrus would be the next hero and that we did have a Shard Summoning event coming. Uh, with Aeon, it took till the day the fusion started. So that began on a Monday. We got it on a Monday. This made a huge difference in terms of us prepping the resources we need to give you. So thank you, Moonton. However, let's get into the good stuff. Let's pop this bad boy up and let's hang out here for a little while. So if you are new to the channel uh, or you're new to me or you haven't been here for other fusions, we've been putting out a calendar like this all the way back since Lunaria. Uh, I sold it, we have a template that we built, but this was when a lot of us were just starting the game. Uh, I joined toward the very end of this fusion, but we already had it for Lunaria, got a little more beautiful for Aeon, and now I think we're getting close to perfection for Pyros. So we have all those old resources too. I'll go through a couple of it, but if you ever need to see it, we can always give access. I will also say we will have a way to get your own copy of this in the description and top pin comment of this video but basically you'll be able to take this personal fusion tracker this is our master copy you can just make a copy and all you have to do is to record your own data as you and track your own data as you go through the event as i'm going to articulate and demonstrate for you here and actually maku coded this all that from his own master files we can update it so what do i mean by that let's see if uh, point totals change you know as the event goes on these are all based off of the aeon event uh, we can always update those remotely and they will immediately update in your sheet. So all you have to worry about is just the fun stuff, tracking your progress and getting your pyros. All right, so it's looking pretty crazy, but we do have to walk you through it and make just, it's, it's, I'm so excited about this. It is so, so great. So as you can see in green, we have all of our events. In red, we have all of our Oracle's Trials. When you do see yellow, these could be events or Oracle's Trials. The reason they're yellow is to highlight the fact that they are summoning events. And that is a great place for us to start. The way they lined up this event in the calendar, how it lines up with weekends and how they chose to distribute summoning events is super unique, specifically to this event. And that's part of what makes it so hard and makes it so scary to approach, at least when looking at it. So what am I saying here? Well, the Pyrus event, as you can see, if you count it out, is 17 days long. That's not so atypical, right? Aeon, this was 16 days long, and Lunari was actually 18 days long. However, it is worth noting this event is going to begin tomorrow on a Friday. Aeon began on a Monday. However, Lunaria did begin on a Friday. So let's actually talk about uh, Pyros versus Lunaria. So we're getting, what, what, what is significant about it landing on a Friday and being 17 or eight days long, 17 for Pyros, 18 for Lunaria? Well, that means it coincides with three weekends, two and a half weeks, but begins on a weekend, so it lines up with three weekends. Weekends are when we have summoning, right? Or at least that's when we have our banners and our big events. With Pyros, they're going all in on the summoning events. So we're getting two summoning events to earn shards for Pyros, to earn fragments for him on the first weekend, then another one the second weekend, another one the third weekend for a total of four summoning events. Uh, not great. <laughs> I'm not loving it. If we go over to Lunaria, you can see we had the same three weekend thing, you know, for September the 1st, over here, September the 8th, and September the 15th. However, that last weekend, September the 15th, there was no summoning event. There was only two summoning events. Bizarre, right? If we go to Aeon, I'm actually gonna have to pull up my own personal tracker, uh, which we edited midway through the event, because they just randomly announced that first weekend, not even announced, it just showed up, and then I had to confirm it with my dev context after. We just had a bonus arrival of heroes, so a bonus summoning Oracle's trial thing, right? Uh, so what that, the way that all sh shaped up, we had summoning one over here. We had summoning two over here. You can see it's all crossed out. That's what happens when you actually complete it. It's very cool. And then I had to do a bonus, right? So we had three events. We're, we're seeing a trend in a, direct, in a direction, right? So with, with uh, Lunaria, we had two. With Aeon, we had three. And now with Pyros, it's shaping up to be four. 
So how many points can you actually get total from the entire shard summoning event and that, you know, getting the fragments of Paris and how many are coming from those summonings? So being that an arrival of heroes or being a spiritual altar, right? Well, with Pyros, it's actually 40 and that is interesting. So why do I say that? This first weekend, we have a spiritual altar. That is what the summoning event looks like and we have an arrival of heroes. That is what a summoning oracles trial looks like. For both of them, it is 10 points, right? You're gonna get them in two increments, very likely. That's what we presume based off of Aeon. Uh, at some lower point threshold, you get your first five. At some later threshold, you get your second five. That's not set in stone. A lot of the assumptions we make are obviously based off of the previous fusions. We can only work with the information we have. However, that's 10 and 10. If we go to summoning number three uh, for the next arrival of heroes, that's again, five plus five, that's another 10. And then summoning number four, our final summoning event, the spiritual altar, that's five plus five, that's 10. So there's 40, 40 fragments or shards of Pyros that you can get just through summoning. Summoning obviously is the pay to win play, pay to win part of these fusions, right? Or the thing as a free to play or low spender, you really have to save for and plan for. If we compare that to Aeon though, even though there were only three events, uh, they were 15 each. Uh, so actually let me go to my tracker with the updated stuff. So here you can see five plus 10, uh, and then we had, da, 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 where is it? Oh my God, I'm blind. Here, five plus 10 for spiritual altar. And then all the way down here with the last arrival here is the final weekend, five plus 10. So it was actually 45 over three events as opposed to 40 over four. Uh, so it is significant that less are coming. However, we're getting uh, slightly more. So as you can see here, let's go back to Pyrus, not counting podiums, which we'll get to in a bit, but podiums are from the Oracle's trial specifically, the tournaments. If you get first, second, or third place, you can get additional fragments, additional shards to make getting that Pyrus easier. But obviously it's hard to presume, you don't know what, what kind of bracket you're gonna be in. It's hard to assume you're gonna get a podium. However, if we just exclude those, the total available fragments for Pyrus are 25. Uh, if we go to Aeon with that additional 15 that were added, it was only 120. So already right off the bat, even though it might look harder than Aeon, it might not be. I still think it could be if you don't plan correctly, but let's do some math here. So for a total of 120 with 45 coming from summoning events and, and Oracle's trials, when it costs 75 to get a copy of one of these heroes, for Aeon, you had exactly 75 available without summoning, and, and then you had to get all of them if you didn't get any podiums and you chose not to summon. Pyrus, not the case, fortunately, right? So we have a total of 125 and 40 of them, 40 are coming from the summoning events. So that means there's actually 85, so you can leave 10 on the table. So Fasidius, then why are you saying it's going to be harder? Well, let's actually talk about the trend we're seeing in the point thresholds you need for each event. So guys, between the Lunaria and the Aeon fusions, we saw a significant increase in the point thresholds you have to hit to get your fragments, meaning the number of points you had to get in an event or an Oracle's trial to earn fragments. In Oracle's trials, I will say they are bracketed, so they might have different thresholds depending on which kind of group you get into. However, with those events, they are consistent and they are steady. So let's just focus on that. Let's give an example right here. We might even give a couple examples. So let's check out Lunaria. We've got our Quarter of Glory, and boy, Quarter of Glory is already a pain in the butt the longer you play this game. Game, super expensive to do, and it's kind of a drag. You kind of start running out of heroes you want to level. But look at this. Look how manageable this was. There were 10 available fragments. You got your first five at a very low point threshold, only 1,800. You got our sec your second five at 4,400. Very manageable, very reasonable, right? Fast forward just five or six weeks to the Aeon Fusion. Now there are 15 available. That's awesome but 15 starting at 2,600. So we went up from 1,800 to 2,600. All right, so only up 800, whatever, slight power creep. Then the next bunch was 1,100 more. So instead of 4,400, it went up to 5,500. And then that third bunch was a very hard to obtain if you didn't pl plan for it, save, a bunch of, save up a bunch of stamina, save up a bunch of diamonds, 8,100 points. I mean, at that point, just go for the 10K. You probably should anyway, get that legendary skill crystal. But that is, that's a big, big spike. Let's give one more example and let's talk about B Brave Conquest, because guys, if you don't know Brave Conquest, you earn points. Court of Glory is when you level up your heroes. It's like a level up event. Brave Conquest is just collecting artifact materials, so your meteorites, or it's collecting gear, right? Uh, so, wow, Brave Conquest. For Lunaria, you could get five here at 1650. This one, you could just get five, right? Let's fast forward it to Aeon. Let's pull up a Brave Conquest here. You again had five available at 3,400. Let's compare that again. From 1,650 to 3,400. Double 1,650 would be 3,300. So it was double the previous threshold plus 100. 
Are you seeing a trend? That is why I think it's really important that people consume content and guides and stuff because you need to be ready. You can't go willy nilly and think it's gonna be as easy as last time. We are seeing a direct increase, right? We are seeing these, these point thresholds climbing, climbing, climbing up a hill. Moreover, outside of uh, shard summing events, outside of fusions, we're just seeing the, the point thresholds and the totals in events go up and up and up. There's no reason to think that's not gonna happen here. So you have to be weary of that. And I'm sure I'll do an update midway through the fusion checking in to see that trend. I would love to see them plateau somewhere. Maybe the Lunaria fusion was too easy for a lot of people, but if we go much higher than the Aeon, it's gonna start to get tricky. So, as I mentioned, there's only 125 available. If you ignore the summoning, it's 85. You can leave five on the table. How should you focus? Should you focus on some summoning events? Should you go all in on the other ones and ignore two? Let's get into that. So guys, to bring this thing home, I wanna take it down the list chronologically, event by event, Oracle's Trial by Oracle's Trial, and explain how I would approach it and what I think you should do. Also, while we do that, I'm gonna explain the mechanics and fill in the calendar, fill in the tracker, so for anyone new, you can learn how to do it. So let's start right at the top. This weekend, we have a spiritual altar. We gotta immediately notice, hey, two yellows on the same weekend, we have a spiritual altar, and we have a arrival of heroes. This seems like a really nice synergy, and it could be. However, the spiritual altar is likely extremely expensive. To get max points on that, these red numbers, they're in red right now, they will turn black, and Maku will update them remotely. Uh, they will turn black as we get hard numbers. These are the numbers we had for max points needed per event or per Oracle's trial in the Aeon fusion. So we obviously don't know what it's gonna be yet for Pyros. As we learn it, we will fill it in. Uh, but 4620 is super hard. Give you perspective, I did not get the second five fragments for Aeon, and you guys know I've been summoning a lot lately. Uh, so there is a potential synergy here. As long as you're prepared to go to like this 1500 to 2000 mark, you should be able to get 15 shards. However, as you're gonna see in my second video I put out today about the actual banners this weekend, I do think this is a very, very desirable weekend to skip summoning. So let me just tell you what I would do. I would skip these, or maybe go for that low extra five just from the arrival of Hero. Just get enough points just to have some five in your pocket and then move right along. Now, before we go into the rest, we do have to talk about our two chaotic clumps. So what are those gonna be? We're starting this bad boy off with what? Two summoning events, two normal events, and then two Oracle's Trials. So that's six things going on in those first four days. That is crazy. So do not get so intimidated by this. Let's actually break down this weekend. And then we also have one other, it might seem hidden here, but we do kind of have a chaotic clump here with all these things lining up. So it's only three at a time, but or four at a time, but four, 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 and it's six events total. That is another thing we're gonna have to key on, but key in on. But getting into that first chaotic clump, look at that. So you have an instant synergy with the two summoning events. So if you do choose to summon, uh, you should just, if you're gonna go hard, go hard. Uh, you can get 20 fragments right there, 20 shards right there. However, like I said, that's gonna be a skip for me. So we're gonna leave off that, that off of our checkbox, right? You know what we'll do just to explain the mechanics here? Let's say I will summon just enough to probably get that lower threshold from the tournament. Uh, that won't even get us close to the lower threshold probably from the summoning event, from the actual spiritual altar. But from the tournament, you can probably snag five. So if you click partial, that will give you the lower amount. And then if you click complete, that will give you the total amount, right? So now it goes to 10. However, we're gonna say that partial, we'll say we'll grab five from that, we're gonna ignore the rest. However, instant synergy, right? So our Brave Conquest, like I said, you can earn points from it from getting artifact materials, from getting your meteorites or getting gear. This lines up beautifully with gear aid two. Gear aid two is awesome. So let's max both those things out, right? And then look at that. You, that's a perfect synergy. As you farm gear A2, you're knocking that event out. Easy peasy. There's an even better synergy with these Brave Conquests coming up later. We'll get into that in a second. We're gonna ignore the Spiritual Altar and now Duel of Champions. This is one I really like and I actually have seen some information going around about this that is not particularly strong. Guys, this had a big kind of shadow patch that came. I put content out about it. Maybe like six weeks ago this happened. This is one of the easiest events, maybe the easiest event in the game. Just mindless free to play easy event. So. The past two, you have needed 150 points. Let me actually find that for you right now. You, even the Aeon one, right? It was 150 points. It was the same for Lunaria, also 150. There's no reason to think it doesn't stay at 150. So what does 150 mean? You get four points from a loss, six points from a, the very rare tie, eight points for a win. But let's say you don't get any wins, which is super unlikely. You're gonna get some number of wins. But if you don't, if you hate Arena, I kind of hate Arena, if you just want to log in and X out of the battle and just take a loss, it's still four points, right? So do some math, 150 divided by four, 
37.5. And so you obviously can't do 0.5, but you could just take 38 battles, intentionally insta-lose all of them, and you've got it, right? You regenerate naturally an arena permit every two hours. So that's 12 a day. This thing lasts for four days. So that's 48 permits. Plus, if you get your idle rewards, that's an extra two a day. So that's another eight. So from a potential maxed out, if you min-max it, you get 56 permits. If you can just take 38 of those, intentionally lose, and then never think about it, would you look at that, you max out the Duel of Champions. So for people that have been saying, don't do this, please just do it. Let's complete it, absolutely. Now onto the hero training. This is something I've already been saving up for. This is when it could start to be tricky. So you kind of are gonna have to go for it. Hopefully the thresholds remain low. 2250 was exceptionally low. Uh, and that is something I wanted to highlight. So we have Hero Training is basically the tournament version of Quarter of Glory. So they're both level up events. One's a tournament, one's an event. With Quarter of Glory, as you can see, where is it? Uh, da, 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 Hero Training 2, that's all the way up at 8100 80, like I showed you. This is all the way down at 2250. Granted, here you are just getting the five fragments. And then here, uh, actually, let's actually look at that. Very important to note, the Quarter of Glory this time around is not going to have 15 uh, fragments as it did with the Aeon thing. So it's back to 10. So would you rather get 10 over here for 2250 or 10? over here for 8100 it's 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 simple right that's just arithmetic those are just uh, inequalities take the smaller number absolutely we're going to go for this one and off to the races we're already a third of the way there we have a very key line you guys can always refer back to the amount of fragments required for a single copy of pyrus is 75 look at that we have 25 and we're just a couple days into the thing we knocked out this beginning so now gear leveling if you farm hard into gear a2 you could be selling stuff off as you gear cleanse and you're kind of good to go in terms of gold to probably put up a decent number in gear leveling. But as you can see with Aeon, the point threshold skyrocketed to 52.65, right? Uh, so you could again go hard on gear raid three those first couple days. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Then you get a little gold extra. However, I think for the vast majority of free to play low spenders and certainly early mid game and even early late game players, you're probably gonna have to hit the gold raid. A lot of people don't like hitting the gold raid. This is a great way to get fodder. And it does line up as you can see with two days with the hero training event. You might need fodder for that. I say hit that gold raid. Do it at least, do the minimum you have to do to make sure you do it. Save yourself the heartache. It's actually not that inefficient. And I do think for an early mid game player, that is what you should do. However, I do think we're at the point now where there's enough resources on how to approach these Tales of the Smith events properly. And a lot of people are a little bit further into the game. This is a must do. I used to say skip these if you didn't want to do them. I think you have to go for it. So we're going to go for that. Gear Raid 3, you should absolutely go for some of the best gear in the game and definitely the best late and end game, end game gear in the game. And when you look at that, another Brave Conquest. It's also worth mentioning, on over here on the side, we have the in-game titles, and then in parentheses, we have what we're gonna refer to them as, because like, what the heck is a Tales of the Smith? In parentheses, gear leveling. All right, easy. So then when you actually look on your calendar, you are gonna see that it says things like gear leveling, as opposed, or it says it's gonna say gear raid one, two, three, and AMR, as opposed to saying Brave Conquest, because what the heck is that? But here we go, we have one of those Brave Conquests. You can see the last two days uh, of the gear raid three are gonna line up perfectly with this three-day Brave Conquest great way to drum up some points, but most importantly, if we skip ahead, we have this AMR tournament, this Mystery of Artifacts Oracles trial. The last day is going to line up with the Brave Conquest as well, so if you didn't go too hard into Gear 8-3, Fear not, that last day, Artifact Material Rate is the best way to get points for Brave Conquest. Just go in on that. Absolutely beautiful. Let's finish that off. It will be easy. And now for our hero training, this is going to be one that I'm going to say go for the partial. Uh, if you can, or if you really want those skill crystals, like for me, I always get the 10,000. because, And I, I honestly suggest you do do that. Uh, however, for like early game players uh, or mid game players, that might be hard if you're trying to put some resources into summoning and into these events. Um, if you can max it out, do it. But if you're going to get that 8,100 or if it even goes up, just go to that 10,000 and get that legendary skill crystal. But I do think for a lot of people, we'll just say you'll get that first bunch at uh, 5,500 or whenever, whatever it's going to be, 3,000, something like that. Who knows? Perhaps because it's only 5 plus 5 and last time it was 5 plus 5 plus 5, maybe they're going to skip out on that 8,100. Um, and in fact, it's going to only be that 5,500, which was the second level that we saw. That'd be pretty great. And if that's the case, I say go for complete. But just for the sake of using the information that we have. We're gonna say we're gonna go for a partial there. And now we get to something interesting. Our next summoning event, we have two remaining summoning events. So this one right here is the arrival of Heroes summoning event. The last one is Spiritual Altar. As I articulated with the, with the hero leveling events, the tournaments have much lower point thresholds. And that was no different when it came to Aeon in terms of the uh, the ways to obtain heroes, the summoning events, right? So the arrival here is the Oracle's version of a summoning event was only 1,500. Then the Spiritual Altar, the actual event was 4,620 to get those max 10 of each, right? So what am I saying here? Granted, with Aeon, it was 15. 
What am I saying here? I'm gonna say you should go to full completion on one of the two events. If you do both, you might spread yourself too thin, especially if you're free to play or low spender. I think this is the one to do it. Hopefully we get a good banner, but there's no banner better than a guaranteed Pyros, and that's what we're trying to get here. So this one, summoning number three, this arrival of heroes, it's gonna be very manageable. And who knows, maybe you get it really quick. You hit lucky on a couple golds, maybe you get a Lord. Next thing you know, you might have some leftover and you can go easy. You know you have enough budgeted for the, the last weekend and the rest of the fusion's easy. Better get it out of the way now than put all your eggs in this basket that's gonna be an expensive basket and kind of a precarious one because you're saving it to the end. So absolutely max out that Arrival of Heroes. Like I said, AMR, you should totally go for it. Uh, it's only five, but it's gonna line up perfectly with the end of that Brave Conquest. Now into the gear leveling, I already brought you through it. You should definitely get that. They're getting easier and easier as it's getting clearer and clearer the best strategies to do this. If you have any questions, just let me know. And when you look at that, another Brave Conquest. So as has been the theme in our previous two fusions, we have three Brave Conquests. That is very much uh, what, what we can expect. And it does line up okay uh, with our Gear Raid 1 tournament, which I think you're gonna wanna do. So that should be a decent way to get into it. But when you look at that, it lines up beautifully with uh, the last two days of the AMR. So there's no reason no one's not gonna be able to look at that. And and not no no way no one's gonna be able not to do that. And ooh la la, three events left and we only need five points. So at this point, you can just pick and choose. You are good to go. Let's go for that Duel of Champions, why not? I told you it's as easy as it gets. And there is our 75. Now you have your Awakening of Heroes, so another hero leveling event. Go for it, why not? You can grab it, and then you have, all right, did I save a little extra, and can I go for that Spiritual Vault Altar? But look how manageable that was, and we hit our 75. There's a lot of rooms to improve and get maxed out things here, and then of course, uh, if you wanna go for these last two, you can do even more. So let's say we went to full completion, now we're at 95. So what the heck are podiums? Let's talk about that. As is typical with any tournament or oracles trial in Watcher of Realms, you are gonna, on top of having ranking rewards, so podium rewards, depending on how you place within the tournament bracket you're in, you will just have normal thresholds of points to get completion rewards. So this is true inside of Fusions and outside. So let me show you right now, it's the Fusions obviously not live yet, but just in our normal Lost Legacy event. So you can see I'm in 11th place, so I'm actually not going to get any ranking rewards. So you need to be in top 10, and then to get the really juicy stuff, you need to be top three. However, by virtue of the fact that I have 4,500 points, I got all these goodies along the way. So when I hit each one of these point thresholds, I get whatever the item is, right? So during a fusion down here, you will have those guaranteed fragments. So this is what you're gonna earn from the Oracle's trial. However, from podiuming, if you get first, second, or third place, you will get additional fragments. So the way it worked in an Aeon is for first place, you got 10 additional fragments or shards, second place was uh, seven, and then third place was five. So let's head back now uh, to our calendar and let's talk about how that could affect you going for your first copy or maybe even trying to get a second copy. Of course, getting a second copy is gonna be really hard. You might want that Pyrus Awakening. I might be going for it. Probably not, but we'll see. So as you can see here, we made it pretty easy. You have your shard podium thing here and it breaks it all down. As you can see in red, those are what you can get from podiuming. So that's your additional. So it goes third place, second place, first place. So additional five, an additional seven, additional 10. And then here you might be wondering why are some of these blacked out and some of them are not. Obviously there are no podium rewards for events. So no reason to point that, uh, push that in. However, of course you do get them for the Oracle's trials. So let's just go in here and let's say, all right, in the vault of the sands, you got to manually enter it, but let's say you got second place. So that's seven. This this will automatically update and now you're at 112. So you can kind of start bringing yourself through a scenario where you can see, could I get a second uh, a second copy? Could I get that extra awakening into my Pyros? And this is where I think the fusion calendar really shines. Because let's be honest, at least thus far through the fusions we've, re we've reached, they haven't been that hard. Aeon was certainly harder than the previous ones and I do anticipate Pyros might be pretty tricky. However, when it comes to getting the second copy, that has always been hard, especially if you're not gonna spend money. It's gonna be super hard. So let's just take it through and let's just, let me do something that maybe I would do. Awakening of Heroes, Heroes Tournament, let's say I got third place, that seems reasonable. Vault in the Sands, let's say I got first place. I mean, I go really hard on Gear Raid. Uh, let's go to Forgotten Palace. I definitely wanna get first place in that bad boy. This is being pretty optimistic, but let's just see, I wanna show you. So look, we're only 20 away now. So we, you can get there, right? So what, what this is what's filling in that we got the, ma ooh, let's actually say I'm not gonna get max or spiritual altar. So let's do half completion. So I'm 25 away. So let's say I reach this point, I'm, you can be pretty much control and plan for how am I gonna perform with the non-podium stuff. So let's say I knew I could do all this and let's say we were on this day uh, and, and I should actually, great time to mention, Maku has coded it so the current day we're on will turn red on here. So right now nothing's red because it's the day before, it's Thursday, but starting on Friday, this will be red and so on and so on day by day. Maku, you're freaking awesome. Uh, however, let's say it was this day. So when is this happening? This is the mystery of artifacts. Uh, let's say we're on mystery of artifacts. Yeah, skip arrival here. So let's say we're on mystery of artifacts 
and I'm assessing. So it's Saturday, November the 25th. I'm at this point. I know I can get the rest of here, so I just filled it out ahead of time, and I'm looking, all right, I'm 25 away. Mystery Artifacts, I might be like, all right, let's be realistic. Let's say I could get second place. Realistic. Let's hope. Now, look at that. I'm still, this is, this is the situation you're going to be in. I still podiumed in four different times, two first places, a third place, and a second place, and look how hard this is going to be with this hypothetical, right? I still need to fill out two more, and we're 18 away. So a second place isn't going to cut it. If I got a first place and a second place, that's seven and 10, that's 17. We're going to have to get 10 and 10 on both of these. One of them is which is the Awakening of Heroes. That one is always hard. And then we also have a Gear Aid 1. Those tend to be hard as well. So I'd have to get two first places to guarantee my second copy. So look at that. 152, we pulled it off, but this is going to be darn hard. So I do think if you want to try to go for that second copy, there's no better use for the calendar right now. Eventually the calendar will be super useful and I think it's already useful, but it's going to be borderline essential I think for everyone when these fusions do get hard and I know we have our new our legendary fusion is coming up very soon I do believe it's going to be the next one but for now I think this is the best thing planning for your second copy if you think you've got a shot all right, let's wrap this thing up just with some instructions on the, the technical stuff. So if you wanna actually do this, use the link in the description. Obviously, this is our Loft Master copy. You guys will not be able to use it. However, you'll get all the perks, all the remote updates from Maku, all that good stuff. All you're gonna have to do to get your own copy, you, you, you go to this sheet and then quickly go file, and then you go to make a copy right here, and then you have your own, own copy. So if your name's Joe, you call it Joe's Personal Fusion Tracker Pyros, you're good to go. Everything will uh, update remotely. All you have to do is just do what we did here, filling in the values that are relevant to you and your account and your progress. Finally, I do wanna highlight this, the daily focus. This is totally customizable, totally optional. However, it gives you an idea of how you're gonna rank your priorities per day in terms of where you're gonna spend your energy and your actual in-game stamina. All in all, I'm pretty happy with this and I'm very happy that Pyros is gonna come home. I think if you guys follow this, everyone will get at least one copy of this beautiful man. Let's go into the gallery and show him off. And if you haven't caught it already, my Pyros guide is out. It is very exhaustive, but I'm very proud of it. I can't wait to get this super, super complicated, but super fun hero. And guys, I know this video was long too, but like I said, I like to do things as holistically, as in-depth as possible, because I really want to give you guys the information you need. Thank you so much. I've been fastidious. If you like the video, like it. Let me know anything you want in the comments. I read everyone. I respond to everyone. Share with your mother. I'll see you in the next one. Fastidious.